Sleight of hand or gaff coins? It's an old debate, but should it even really be a debate? I know a lot of guys out there that only use sleight of hand and no gaffs, as if it's some kind of selling point, or probably just an ego trip. Let's be honest, a lot of the great coin magic out there uses a gaff coin, or a set of gaff coins. I personally feel like, why would you limit yourself to all the tools available to you if you're trying to create a specific effect? Join me as I take a look at an old coin trick that uses a gaff coin. Let me guide you along in a better handling that uses sleight of hand, so you can get the most out of that old trick. Let's go. Greetings and welcome back. Thanks for joining me again. If this is your first time watching, go check out some of my other videos where I give advice and tips on some basic vanishes, I teach you some of my own creations, and there's some other discussions. And if you haven't already subscribed, consider subscribing. One of the advantages of subscribing is you'll know when I do some giveaways. And at the end of this month, I'll be giving away David Roth's Expert Coin Magic by Richard Kaufman. So keep an eye out for that. So today I wanted to talk about gaffed coins and sleight of hand. And after you've gotten started in coin magic, you're going to ask yourself this question. Ah, oh, what does this coin do? And what does that coin do? And how much are they? Which one should I get? And if you've gone through Bobo's, you've read that chapter on all the trick coins and all the cool stuff you can do. And it all seems pretty interesting and easy. And it is easy. But that's the major downside of starting gaffs too early. We all love those classic tricks like copper silver brass, scotch and soda, the hopping halves, the cigarette three quarter, and the coin in the bottle, but if you don't have the solid foundation of sleight of hand, you're gonna do those tricks and they're kind of one trick ponies. You bring those special coins out, do the trick, do what they do, and then you have to put them back because you don't know where to go next. So the major point I want you to take away today is having strong sleight of hand skills while using gaffs and not relying on the gaff to make magic for you. Now while I'm on that topic, I want to recommend to you some people that use sleight of hand and gaffs in the most amazing ways. The first guy being David Neighbors. Now he has a lot of different books out and this is the last book that came out in uh, 2013, The David Neighbors Project. And this is volume one of, I think, there will be three. And the second one, I hope, is coming out this year from some different things I've read. But David Neighbors does some of the craziest sleight of hand while also using gaffed coins, and a lot of times, multiple gaffed coins. And it leaves the audience with no clue as to what's going on and I don't think you can get this book anymore but like I said I think volume two is on its way out sometime this year. The second guy I want to talk to you about is Troy Hooser and he's not talked about enough and it's a shame really because he's done maybe the most work on the flipper coin that I've seen and so in this book you'll find that and a lot of uh, work with just a shell coin and his his thoughts on three fly in here are really different and there's also some excellent card magic in this book there's a, a companion to this called moments and i think you can still get both of those books on vanishing ink but i have to double check that the third guy luis piedrajita from spain this guy is one of my favorite coin magicians and He's hilarious on top of that. You can see a lot of his work on YouTube. Uh, there's a show in Spain where he does magic, close-up magic for a lot of celebrities, whoever's the guest on the show. And you can see almost all those routines uh, that are in the book. You can see them on video on YouTube. And in here, I think each routine uses a gap, but it's mainly just one gaff that we all have probably already. 
So those are three books I highly recommend you checking out if you have the money and the time to invest in learning the material. Because like I said, these guys are using heavy sleight of hand with the gaps. So today I wanted to talk about an old trick in Bobo's called Presto Changeo. It's in the thick book on page 245. Now for this trick, you will need a silver coin, a copper coin, and a copper silver coin. Now, if you don't have the book, or if you have the book and don't want to look this up, I'll briefly explain, but you show a copper and silver coin, you close your hand and snap, and they both become copper. You close again, they both become silver, and they, you can go back and forth as many times as you want. Now, I wanted to go over the handling as described and then teach you a better handling with sleight of hand. And then what to do after the trick. So you're getting more out of this gaff that's already in play and not just doing a one trick pony. So as described, you reach into your pocket, you finger palm a copper coin, and then you bring out to your fingertips a copper silver and a silver coin. Obviously you want the copper side showing of the copper silver coin. So these come out of your pocket. You show the audience, you pick up the silver coin, and you're going to switch it for the copper coin that's hidden in finger palm. Now, here's the first thing I have trouble with. The Bobo switch. What an ugly move. I try to look for the positive thing in, in everything I read, but this move sucks. This looks like nothing I would do in real life. And you end up like this, which is a terrible position. So, luckily there's an alternative to the Bobo switch in Bobo's. If you look back on page 12, you'll find something called the one hand switch. So the one hand switch, as described, I'll paraphrase here. You have one coin hidden in finger palm and a coin on display. The first finger is going to pull this coin down to the base of the thumb where it's gripped. This is called frickle palm. At this point, the thumb tip pushes the finger palm coin out to the display. The coin that was previously shown is now in finger palm. This is hard to do slowly, but again, the coin on display goes down to the base of the thumb it's gripped there. The finger palm coin is pushed out and the switch is made. So we're here, then there. Now in the description, it's, it says this happens undercover when the audience isn't watching. So say for instance, you had a bent quarter hidden in finger palm and you borrowed a regular quarter from the audience. And as you're talking and coming back with the coin, you would switch and it would, it would be something that goes unnoticed. But this can be something that is on display as a nice color change. Something like that. Now a little bit of history. The one hand switch is actually the Demanche change. The Demanche change was actually published over 50 years earlier in 1902 in the book called The Modern Conjurer by C. Lang Neal. In there we can see uh, an even better description and it actually has photographs. So we can see this is the same move as described by Bobo as the one hand switch. So this is one reason Bobo's is lacking because there's not proper credit given, not even the proper name used. And you can learn more about that in my video, This Is Not The Bible, about uh, Bobo's coin magic. So in my opinion, the one hand switch or the demand change is a way better looking alternative than the Bobo switch. 
So let's go back to the beginning when we had a copper coin hidden in finger palm, then a copper silver and a regular silver on display in the open left palm. Now this is a bobo switch. Does that look better than just this? I don't think so. So I prefer the demanche change over the bobo switch. Now, from here, I'm gonna improve the handling. I think it's a way better idea to palm the gaffed coin, the copper silver, as you come out of your pocket. In that way, you can show the audience two normal coins, front and back. Now, you wanna see the orientation of the gaffed coin. As you come out of your pocket, check to see which face is touching your fingers. So in this case, I see silver, but the copper side is touching my fingers. I want the copper coin to be in this hand because when I do the switch, I want it to show copper. So I'm gonna show this to the audience and I might ask them, uh, choose either copper or silver. And that's when I do the switch. The copper coin is now switched for the copper silver coin. And whichever one they say, copper or silver, I'm gonna say the same thing. So for instance, they chose copper. I'm gonna say, now watch that copper coin as it changes to silver. All I did was flip that over. If the audience had chosen silver, I would say, now watch that copper coin as it changes to silver. See, I had the same response for either coin. They don't know what's about to happen. So the coins have just changed to silver, or the copper has changed to silver. So you grab the real silver coin in the right hand and showing both coins silver, you're gonna do another demonstration. change. You might say to the audience, well, you might have chosen the other color, in which case we would have gone with that. Now both coins have changed. Again, you grab the real coin with your right hand, display both. And you might say, you didn't choose the other color though, you chose uh, silver, in which case they'll be silver. Now on the third time, I grab the gaff with the right hand, the silver coin in the left. And I say, let's go back to the beginning when we had a silver and a copper. And I do one more demonst change that's slightly misdirected because as I'm looking at here, I do, I do the change over here. So it is out in the open, but it's not in your face. So at this point you have two normal coins. You could end it here, let the audience hold these and check them out. But I like to do one more phase that's in their hands. So we're back at the beginning with two normal coins. The copper silver is already in the correct orientation for when I do the switch. What I'm gonna do is a copper silver transposition in their hand. So again, I'm starting off with a switch. And at this point, I don't bring this into finger palm. I've done the switch and now I'm just thumb palming the copper coin. I ask the audience, do you mind holding your hand out? As I come back, I grip that coin in finger palm. Uh, so you're, you're showing the audience how you want them to hold their hand, palm down, come back and finger palm, and I'm going for the silver coin, the real silver coin. I'm gonna come under their hand and on the way, do one more switch. So they see silver, but I go underneath, put copper in their hand, they clench their hand. I come away with the silver coin now all attention is directed at my coin, which I leave wide open on my hand. I say, watch my coin, the copper coin, as it changes to silver. And now you have the copper. And as soon as I direct them to their own hand, do a shuttle pass to the real silver coin. And they've opened their hand by that time. And they're flipping that coin over and looking at it. 
and I drop my coin in their hand, I relax, and this goes right in my pocket. And so you've created five minute or more routine with two routines, and part of that happens in their hand. So this is just one way to take sleight of hand with a gaff and extend it out to more of a, a performance, and you've involved the audience. So I want to run through the whole routine in one piece with my own handling so you can see how everything fits together. So in your pocket you're going to want the coins in a stack like this and they won't get out of order in your pocket. So you have the copper silver coin with the silver face outward, then the silver coin behind it and the copper coin behind that. So that's sitting in your pocket like this with the copper silver silver side out. As you go dip in your pocket, it's easy to grab all three into finger palm as you come out like this. Take the copper coin with your left hand and then push the silver coin up to your right fingertips. The copper silver is left in the correct orientation and it's in position in finger palm. So you're going to show the audience, you got a silver coin and a copper coin. Uh, you choose copper or silver. Silver? Okay, watch that silver coin as it changes to copper. Now you might have chosen copper, in which case I would have changed them to silver. But you didn't, you chose copper, so we'll make them both copper. Well, let's go back to the beginning when I had a copper coin and a silver coin. How would you mind holding your hand out flat for me? Great. I'm going to give you the copper coin. Switch. Now watch my silver coin. So all I have to do is snap and it changes to copper. And you have the silver coin. And you can check those out. So that's the whole thing as one piece and pretty much the same pattern I would kind of use. So that's it for today, guys. I hope I got my point across that you don't have to rely on gaffs to just do one trick. You can use sleight of hand to extend the life of that gaff. And if you love pure sleight of hand, there's no reason to be afraid or ashamed to throw in a gaffed coin with whatever you're doing. So uh, again, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe because there's more videos coming. There's no other coin magic YouTube channel out there teaching the stuff I'm teaching. So subscribe. Check me out on Instagram. I put weird ideas up there and stuff I'm working on. And again, stay tuned for that contest at the end of the month. Thanks again for watching.